In this session, you'll learn how to establish the tuition rates that you charge for your center. To do so, you'll go to the configuration menu at the top and choose system. Here you'll go to accounting management, and then we're going to start out under family accounting by going to charge and credit descriptions. These are global and can affect all your locations if you're managing multiple locations. So we'll double click on charge and credit descriptions. And we have various tabs at the top. We're gonna to start out with tuition charges. So these are descriptions for the categories of tuition that you might charge to various families. So we have tuition infants, tuition toddlers, tuition preschool. Yours may be broken down differently. You'll want to break it down based on the standard rates that you charge and the different categories of rates that you have that will help you when you're then assigning fees to children later on. So for example, I have two infants rooms. I have a, a zero to six months and an over six. So I'm gonna actually just rename this existing one and call it tuition infants. And I'm gonna say zero to six months. Now I wouldn't normally change this once I had got started because that would change anywhere I had previously used that description. Since I'm just getting started, it's fine to just type over the name with a new name. Then I'm going to add a new one at the top. I'm going to make one called tuition infants um, over six months. And then I'm going to assign that to a general ledger account number. It's okay if you aren't familiar with general ledger account numbers. These will show up on certain types of accounting reports that an accountant or a board might want to look at. So for now, just choose 4,000 tuition. And then we're going to go ahead and click save. And when you do that, when you add a new one and save it, it will ask you which locations you want to expose it to. In other words, is this tuition infants greater than six months a category that I would charge to children at all my locations or only certain locations? Maybe I only offer that program at one location. If I offer it at all locations, I just click the check mark at the top and I will have exposed this description so that I can use it at any of my locations. And then I may want to use the arrows here to reposition it and put it up toward the top along with the other infants category, and I can click Save. So that's the basic idea for creating a new tuition charge. You have different tabs at the top. The other ones that are important for establishing on your own would be other charges. So these would be things that wouldn't normally be considered tuition, things like uh, activity fee, registration fee, diaper fee. So if there's some of these here that you don't use, you can delete them or you can add new ones. Uh, one thing we will want to do, we have a couple at the bottom here that we need to assign account numbers to. So there's one here called ACH uh, return fee. And so that we'd probably want to put into uh, non-sufficient funds fees is what that revenue category. And I have a credit card batch decline fee that would probably also be the same thing. Those would be Fees I would potentially charge if uh, someone's card bounced or I had a, a check or something that was returned. So I'll go ahead and save those settings. Okay, and then the other section you may want to look at would be credits. So these would be the names or the categories of different kinds of credits you might give to a family. A common one would be a family discount, or you could change the name of that to sibling discount if you prefer. Um, employee discount, payroll deduction, absent vacation credit. Those are common types of credits. And if you don't know what you may want to use here right now, I would just stick with the defaults. You could always come back later and establish other ones. So let's go ahead and exit out of the charge and credit descriptions. The next section we'll want to look at are standard amounts. And you'll notice this has a schoolhouse next to it. So these are established one location at a time, given the possibility that you might charge different rates at different locations. So we're going to go ahead and double click on standard amounts to open that up. And then anything that has a typical rate where most families in that category would be charged that rate on, say, a recurring weekly or monthly basis, whatever your most common scenario would be. So let's say, for example, um, I have, maybe I have weekly rates and I'm going to put in something like that for my infant zero to six. And then usually as the kids get older, the rate might go down slightly. And then I could go through and establish rates for all the different age groups, and you get the idea there. You may have some things where the rate really isn't standard. An example of that would be a drop-in tuition. Uh, it may not be a fixed 
weekly or monthly rate or something that's easily determined that way. It may be hourly or something else, in which case, then you could leave the standard amount zero. And you can always customize the amounts on a child by child, case by case basis, but you'd want to be putting in here the things that were most common and would save you time when setting up families. So we'll go ahead and click save. You can do the same thing if you have standard rates for other types of charges. Maybe you have a standard registration fee of like $35. You could save that. If there are things here that don't have standard rates, you could leave them zero. Under credits, uh, you may have a standard family discount. Oftentimes though, we find that family discounts are offered as a percentage, like 10% off the second child, something like that. So then it's not a strict dollar amount. And if that's the way yours work, then you would leave these zero. The only reason you would put in a standard amount for a discount is if it was always the same dollar amount or usually. So for example, if your family discount was always $10 for the second child, then you'd put 10 in here. But if it's a percentage off, just leave it zero and we'll show you how to establish that later. All right, let's go ahead and save and exit out of that. And so the next thing to look at will be uh, deposit accounts. Deposit accounts are also school specific. So again, remember you could use change school to set those for another location as well. So under deposit accounts, these are the accounts that you want available when you say take a deposit to the bank or if you're using Tuition Express uh, when the deposits are automatically closed. What bank account in ProCare do you want that money going to? Oftentimes it's going to be the checking account, but if you sometimes would make a manual deposit and break some of it up between checking and savings or some other kind of account, you can check off other accounts here as well. Usually my checking account is adequate and we'll set that as our deposit account. The next thing to look at are billing cycles. Billing cycles are global, we'll double click here. So common billing cycles are recurring uh, times when you charge families tuition. It's not the same as when they pay, so they might pay you every other week, but if you charge them a weekly rate, then weekly would be your cycle. But maybe you do charge them every other week, so maybe you want to add a new section in here, a new cycle called biweekly. And say, click save, and if you want to change the order again, you can do that here. And we've established a new cycle. So anything in here, uh, usually weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, those are going to be the most common. The next thing to take a quick look at will be billing formulas. If you have the attendance tracker module of ProCare, billing formulas allow you to bill things like an hourly rate or half day, full day rate or extra hours or late pickup fees, things like that. There are many billing formulas that are in here by default, so I just want you to see that these are available to you. We can typically build custom formulas as well if your situation is unique. You'll want to talk to our training and technical support teams about which formulas might be most appropriate for your center. The one that we'll look at today is called After Hours Pickup, and we'll double click on that. And I want to show you a quick change you can make in here. So a couple quick changes. One is typically these late pickups are by the minute. So we've got it set as a default as a dollar a minute. If you charge a different rate per minute, that could be entered there. The other thing we want to look at is on line five, uh, we have the time of day that this kicks in. So in this case, it's set to five o'clock. So if I do close at five, if I really want to give like a little grace period, like a five minute grace period, I would probably want to set that to 5.05. So that means it wouldn't start actually charging them till the minute after that, till 5.06. If you close at a different time, you might want to establish that here as well. So I'll go ahead and change that to 5.05, click save and exit. And now I've got my after hours pickup set up. And then lastly, uh, if you have agency accounting, if you work with subsidized families, you'll want to establish who your third party agencies are that you work with. So we'll double click on third party agencies. Right now I've got in here by default county and state. I'm going to delete those because I don't call those that in my area. I'm going to delete them both and I'm going to add a new one and I'm just going to call it DHS. And you could put in the contact information here if you want to, it's not necessary. And that will then ask me to choose to expose DHS to the locations at which I might use it. So if I have subsidized families at both locations and I'm working with DHS at both, then I have them marked all, I have that appropriately. 
If I only do it at one location, I would check just the location that I want them to be exposed to, to be available to. So this will then allow me to charge a portion of fees to uh, the agency like DHS. And those are all the main settings that you need to know about to get your accounting established.